Yeah, hello, and how are you? Hey, friends, welcome to the Shin Show. I am your host, Shenandoah Briscoe, coming to you from right here in St. Charles, Missouri. Hey, you know what? Today is Monday, uh, May the 18th, 2020. Got a happy birthday shout-out going out to Courtney Sanson and Emily Cox, Chuck Sweezy, and Gail Nur. So, without further ado, here is a birthday song for the four of you. I said, hey, you heard it's your birthday today. So, happy birthday, I am say. You know, Courtney, Emily, Chuck, and Gail, you just turned a brand new year older today. I said, hey, you heard it's your birthday today. So, happy birthday, I am say. You know, you just turned a brand new year older today, so happy birthday to you, I say. And many more. Cha 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 cha. Hey, also got a um, happy Facebook poke out. Happy Facebook poke out. Just a Facebook poke. Uh, mm, reminder Facebook pokes are going out to Amanda Sue Little and Melissa Holtz. That's right. Um, missing, I'm missing, uh, Karen Sanders, but that doesn't mean nothing. She's out there somewhere and available, I'm sure. She will be poking sooner or later. I will get a poke back, I'm sure. Alrighty then. Uh, let's see. You know what? The weather today is, <laughs> that's what's going on. The weather today is going to be sponsored by, um, someone else other than, the uh, 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 um, other than Wallace Resale right now, and the reason being is because well, um, the Family First Home Healthcare LLC are, is the agency that takes care of me, and well, they don't have very many St. Charles employees, which means that their employees come from who knows where. As a matter of fact, most of their employees have been coming all the way from Illinois. Like, um, like Cahokia and that area of Illinois, all the way out here to St. Charles to take care of me. And, well, it's the trip that gets them. And so, uh, I figure if I throw out a few words of encouragement that maybe I could get some applications for them. So, that would be First Family Home Health Care, LLC. You can reach them by going to... Uh, family first, that would be F-A-M-L-I, F-A-M-I-L-Y, one, S-T-H-H-C, dot com, um, on their website, or, and you can fill out an application there, or you can go to family first at gmail dot com, oh, family first H-H-C at gmail dot com. Okay, either of the two. Alrighty. Um, if you do want to call and by phone, you can use the business phone at 636-734-9802. And you can either talk to Tracy Barry or you'll also be able to speak with Brandy, the secretary. Either one. Okay? Okay. Now, let's see if you want to talk to Tracy directly. Her cell phone is business cell phone. is 636-757-3811. You can contact them between the hours of 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. The office is located at 111 Westport Plaza, Suite 600, St. Louis, Missouri, 63146. Alrighty, well, alrighty then. So if you want to do that, um, just replay it back as slow as you need to. Pause in between so that you can figure out what I'm saying as slow as you need to hear it. Alrighty, thank you so very much. And uh, we, we appreciate that. Okie dokie. Now then, let's see here. 
So anyway, that brings us to the local weather for the St. Charles viewing area. 63 degrees out there, or 68 degrees out there right now. Kind of a little slightly overcast. Um, and tonight is going to be overcast with showers at times. Lows around 54 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds are going to be northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Chances of rain, 40%. And then Tuesday, May the 19th, overcast with showers at times. Highs around 66 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds west, uh, I mean winds north to northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Chances of rain, 40%. Showers in the evening, then cloudy overnight. Lows around 59 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds are going to be north to northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Chances of rain, 50%. And then Wednesday, May the 20th, that's right, showers in the morning, then cloudy in the afternoon. Highs around 71 degrees Fahrenheit, winds east to northeast at 5, 10 miles per hour. Chances of rain, 30%, mostly cloudy on overnight, with lows around 57 degrees Fahrenheit, and winds east to northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Thursday, May the 21st, mostly cloudy skies, highs around 73 degrees Fahrenheit, winds east at 5 to 10 miles per hour. A few clouds from time to time overnight, lows around 58 degrees Fahrenheit, winds east to southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then, Friday, May 22nd, partly cloudy skies in the morning will give way to cloudy skies during the afternoon. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible. Highs near 80%. I mean, sorry about that. Highs near 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds are going to be southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then variable clouds with scattered thunderstorms overnight. Lows around 63 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds southeast, uh, south to southeast, that is, at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Chances of rain, 60%. And then partly to mostly cloudy skies on Saturday, May 23rd, with scattered thunderstorms in the morning. Highs around 86 degrees Fahrenheit, winds south at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Chances of rain, 40%. And then isolated thunderstorms, yes, partly cloudy, with isolated thunderstorms possible after midnight. Lows around 68 degrees Fahrenheit, and winds south at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Chances of rain, 30%. And that, my friends, concludes our five-day forecast for the St. Charles Viewing Area brought to you by Family First LLC Home Health Care. That's Family First Home Health Care LLC. That's right. Call at uh, 636-734-9802 between the hours of 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Or go to their website to file an application at Family First Health Care. That's uh, home health care, that is. That's F-A-M-I-L-Y-1-S-T-H-H-C dot com. Alrighty. Well, alrighty then. Mm, that being said, uh, what else do we got going on today? How about, how about, how about a song? A song. Well, yeah, a song. Uh, well, what about a song? Well, how about me singing a song? I don't know which song to sing, but it'll be a good one. I'm sure it will. You know, I haven't, well, I haven't. I do have a song stylings of Johnny Cash in my um, uh, voice tone, in my tone. Uh, yeah, in my range. That'd be the word, in my range. So maybe I'll do a Johnny Cash tune. Okay, how about it? How about one of those Johnny Cash tunes? Um, Ghost Riders? Sounds good to me. I like Ghost Riders. It's one of my favorites. Song lyrics, Ghost Riders in the Sky. Which would be Johnny Cash. An old cowboy went riding out one dark and windy day. 
Upon a ridge he rested, and as he went along his way, when all at once a mighty herd of red-eyed cows he saw, plowing through the rugged skies and up a cloudy draw. Their brands were still on fire, and their hoofs were made of steel. Their horns were black and shiny, and their hot breath he could feel. A bolt of fear went through him as they thundered through the sky. For he saw the riders coming, and heard their mournful cry. If ya yo if ya ghost riders in the sky. Their faces gaunt, their eyes were blurred, their shirts all soaked with sweat. He's riding hard to catch that herd, but he ain't caught em yet. Cause they've got to ride forever on that range up in the sky, on horses snorting fire. As they... Yep, sorry about that. On horses snort, snort and fire. Sorry, lost myself. Completely lost. Eyes are going too, so mm, we'll just we'll just chalk it up to that. Okay. Hip ya hip ya ghost riders in the sky. Their faces gaunt, their eyes were blurred, their scant shirts all soaked with sweat. He's riding hard to catch that herd, but he ain't caught him yet. Cause they've got to ride forever on that range up in the sky. On horses snorting fire, as they ride, he, on they hear their cry. If ya if ya ghost riders in the sky. As the riders loped on by him, he heard one call his name. If you want to stay, save your soul from hell, or riding on a rage, then cowboy change your ways today, or what if us you will ride. Trying to catch the devil's herd across these in disguise. If ya, if ya, ghost riders in the sky, ghost riders in the sky, ghost riders in the sky. All right, well. I don't know if it was good, but it sounded okay to me. I tried to get it right, but then I lost my vision. It went blurry. But as soon as it came back, I kind of finished that song. Because I am... Uh-oh, forgot a word. <laughs> I am diligent, and I will sing it till it's done. There you go. Oh, okay, here we go. I, I was just, you know, I, I throw them songs out there and lib out loud. And I try to rhyme them up and get them to where they make you proud. Anywho, any hoot and any, uh, let's see, anything else? Anything else? Do we want to do another one? You know, Abel's Fables, or Sable's Fables, Aesop's Fables is some really weird stuff. I don't know what, 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 what to read. I mean, Aesop's Fables are good, but I'm trying to figure out some stuff to read for the grandkids that's not going to put them to sleep scared to death. But if you notice, all your nursery rhymes all have a horrible ending. I mean, like, um, even the little songs that, that you got going on, like, um, how about um 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 rock a bye baby rock a bye baby in the treetops when the wind blows so a cradle will rock 
When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall, slamming baby to the ground, cradle and all. Three blind mice all got killed and cut their tails off with their butcher's wife. <laughs> three blind mice, three blind mice. See how they run, see how they run. They all went after the, the farmer's wife. She cut off their tails with a butcher's knife. Did you ever see such a sign in your life? But three blind mice. Do -de -de -do -de -do. Which you know is the theme song for the Three Stooges. Did did you know that? Hmm. Well, it is. It certainly is. Readers to the rescue. I wonder what that is. Can you help rescue these storybook characters? Play readers to the rescue. Let's see how to do that. Please wait while we run a few checks and start loading. What? This one's got a bear on it. A big old grizzly bear. I don't know what's going on. It's sitting here. They're running some checks. Well, they ain't going to be running too many checks on me. I'm out. No way. Uh-uh. Not going to play. We're not going to play. Not if you're going to run background checks on me. Well, you know this is a government site. This is... No, I did not want to play that. Go back. What's this arrow go to? The rocket book. Well, let's read the rocket book. See what that's all about. The rocket book and upward prog progress to of a rocket. Well, let's see here. Return to description. Um, let's auto. Okay, well, how do we turn pages? Oh, there we go. The Rocket Book by Peter Norwell. Harper and Brothers. New York. Try it again. The Rocket Book. When Fritz, the janitor janitor's bad kid went snooping in the basement he found a rocket snugly hid beneath the windows casement he stuck a match struck a match with one fell swoop then on to the concrete he kneeling he lit the rocket and she whoop it shot up through the ceiling well, the Steiners on the floor above of breakfast were partaking. Crash come the rocket, unannounced, uh, and set them all a quaking. It smoked a ketchup bottle, fair, and bang, the thing exploded, and now these people all declare. That ketchup's flask was loaded. Second flat before the fire, old Grandpa Hop dozed in his armchair, being big when from a trunk the rocket burst and carried off his wig. It, po it passed so near his ancient head. He aroused up with a start, and turning to his grandson said, You fellows think you're smart? Uh, Allegonia Bracket, somewhat rash, this is a third flat. Allegonia Bracket, somewhat rash, had blown a monster bubble 
when, oh, then a blinding flash. Per... Per... Precipitating trouble. Precipitating trouble. But Alki turned in mid disgust. And, but Algy turned in mild disgust and called to Mama Bracket, Say, did you hear the bubble bust? It made an awful racket. Fourth flat, Joe Bud, who brought a potted plant, was doubling, d dousing it with water. He fascinated that it would make it grow. And Joseph loved to potter. Then threw the pot, the rocket shot, and made the the scene look sicky, sickly. Well now, said Joe, whoops. I never thought that plant would shoot up so quickly. Fifth flat, right here in tis, tis needful to remark that Dick and little son were playing with a Noah's Ark and having loads of fun, when all at once the rocket shot up through the Ark and came ablazing. The animals were tossed about and did some stunts amazing. The sixth flat, a burglar, on the next floor up, the sideboard was exploring. The family with the bridal pup were still asleep and snoring. Just then, up through the silverware, the rocket thundered, flaring. The burglar got a dreadful scar, then out the window went a tearing. The seventh flat, Miss Mimi of Briggs, with n no mean skill, was playing Casey's fling to please her cousins Amos and Gill, who did the sort, who who liked that sort of thing. When suddenly the rocket hot, the old piano jumbled. It stopped that ragtime like a shot. Th then, through the ceiling, it rumbled. Eighth flat. Up through the next flat on its way, that rocket dread went tearing, where Winky Winkle stood in a bathrobe gay. A tepid bath pe preparing. That tub it punctured like a shot, and made a mighty splashing. The man was rooted in the on the spot. Then out the door he went a dashing. The ninth flat. Bob Brooks was puffing very hard, his football to inflate, while rounding him stood his faithful guard and the. They could hardly wait. Then came the rocket, fierce and bright, and through the football rumbled. You've got a pair of lungs, all right, his str stringing playmates grumbled. The tenth flat, the family dog with... <sighs> the family dog with a fr a friends in mind was chasing Fluffy, the mouser, when poof, the rocket flashed between and quite astonished Towser. Now, if the this dog had wit enough, the English tongue to torture, he might have growled such silly stuff as, Phew, that cat's a scorcher. The eleventh flat. While Carrie Cook was, sat with a book, the phonograph played sweetly. 
Then came the rocket, and it smashed the instrument completely. Fair Carrie promptly turned her head, attracted by, uh, attracted by the roar. Dear me, I never heard, she said, that record played before. The twelve flat. D. Verne was scratching, I mean, was searching for a match to light a cigarette, but failed to find one with dispatch, which threw him in a pass, in a, in a pet. Just then the rocket flared up bright before his face and crackled, supplying him with the needed light. Thanks awfully, he cackled. The, ten, the thirteenth flat. Home for the shop came Maud's new hat, a hat of monstrous size. It almost filled the tiny flat before her ravished eyes. When she, when such, when swoosh, up through the box so proud, the rocket flared and sputtered. I said this. I said that hat was all too loud, her peevish husband muttered. Fourteenth flat. Tom Pap had helped him start his train. Tom's Pap had helped him start his train. And all would have been fine had not the rocket raisin cane block traffic on the line. It blew the engine into scrap, and in a fit of passion, who would have thought that that toy, said Pap, would blow up in such fashion? Okay. Fifteenth flat. Orlando Pease, quiet, as at his ease, the morning star was reading. My dear, he said to Miss Pease, here's a report with heating, worth heating. The rocket then, in wanton sport, flashed through this printed pages. Then the lady gasped a wild report then swooned by easy stages. Sixteenth flat. Doc Dunby was a stupid guy, so let's, lest he sleep too late. He placed a tattoo clock nearby to wake him at eight. But, ah, uh, the rocket smote the clock and smashed it away clean through. Through it, smashed its way clean through it. You have a fine alarm, said Doc, but say, don't you overdo it. Seventeenth flat, a penny liner. Uh, Abram Stout was writing a description the flame shot up, he poured it out and threw a mild conniption. For though his Fleming, Flemington there stride, a rocket hot and mystic, I didn't mean to be, he cried, so deduced realistic. The 18th flat. Gus Gummer long had, had set his head upon some strange invention. Be careful, Gus, his good wife said. It might explode, I mention. Just then, uh, the pesky rocket flared and wrecked the, that Yankee notion. I feared as much, his wife declared then fainted from emotion. Nineteenth flat. Boy, this is a strong rocket. While Bert was on his hobby horse and riding it like mad, 
the rocket on its fiery course upset the startled lad. The frightened pony plunged a lot like fury plain tag. Woo, spout, woe spout, said Bert, who would have thought you such a fairy snag. Twentieth flat, a taxidermy piled his trade upon a walrus, plied his trade upon a walrus head. It's really ma made him quite afraid to meet its stare so dread. When suddenly the rocket bright flared up the up and then was off. Oh, miner! Cried the man in fright. Just hear what walrus! That walrus cough. <laughs> Oh, top floor, finally. Oh, it was just a splendid flight, the rocket's wild career. But not to an end it came all right, as you're, you shall straight away hear. It plunged into a can of cream that Billy Bunk was free freezing and froze quite stiff as it would scream as it would seem and so subsided a wheezing the end hmm, well then that was the rocket and that was enough for today so let's see it looks like it's about time for our portion of the program called our daily bread and that's going to be brought to you by well, you know what? Um, we didn't bring any to, anything to you by Wallace Resale. But uh, we'll go ahead and mention Wallace Resale on Facebook at Wallace Resale. Uh, um, Facebook. Just go there and you can take a look around and get with uh, either Rick or Dawn on, on Wallace Resale. Okay, Daily Bread. Daily Bread is brought to you by The Bible with Briscoe 2020. That's right, the Bible with Briscoe 2020. And uh, your narrator slash uh, messenger of God, Shenandoah Briscoe. Today on the Bible with Briscoe 2020, uh, you're going to be covering verses, uh, 1 Chronicles 14 through uh, 16 scriptures. First Chronicles four through six, not fourteen through sixteen. First Chronicles four through six and John six one through twenty one. Those will be your scriptures for today on the Bible with Briscoe twenty twenty. All right, for today um, the devotion is called the Gift of Peace. That's right, the Gift of Peace, and we're going to be reading Luke two. 25 through 35, because, well, I'm telling you, if you go to the odb.org, you are more than welcome to read the Daily Devotion. All you need to do is go to their website, sign up, sign in, and throw a bit of change their way every now and again, so that you might be able to read their um, Daily Devotion, which is excellent read. It gives you a chance to read um, a regular story out of what's going on in the regular world. And then it gives you a scripture that would be pre presentable or pre presentable. There would be a suitable as to um, match whatever the devotion is all about. Anyway, today's scripture is Luke 2. 25 through 35, and here we go. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. 
moved by the spirit, he went into the temple courts. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child, the child's father and mother marveled at what the man, what was said about him. Then Simon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your son's soul too. And there you have it. Uh, that was Luke 2, 25 through 35, which completes the daily bread portion of our program, which leaves us with one song left, which would be, well, goodbye, my friends. It's a time to go. I said goodbye, my friends. It's time to go. I hate to leave you, but I really must go. So goodbye, my friends, goodbye. This here has been Shenandoah Briscoe saying hello, and how are you? And thanks for tuning in to the Shen Show, because, you know, as always, you know, God loves you, and so do I. So be blessed, and come back and see me tomorrow, because, well, hey, I'll be here, and I hope that you are, too.